We recently talked a bit about the dead space problem, where long-necked animals have a physical limitation that they have to overcome in order to breathe. There have been many theories advanced as far as how sauropods could have gotten around this, the most unhinged of which was a talk in 1997 by one Henry H. Gale. He offered what he called a simple solution, that the breath took a shortcut, passing in and out through a vent or vents in the throat near the base of the neck. Because this was an SVP presentation, I only have the abstract, but Matt Weddle, a sauropod worker and possibly the only living human who remembers this, said that Gale's vents were functional pharyngeal slits. This would imply that they derived from the pharyngeal clefts and pouches that embryos develop on either side of what will become their neck. In fish, those join together to form pharyngeal slits, which eventually grow into gills. In amniotes, those form a whole variety of organs. Jaw bones, ear bones, throat bones, tonsils, it turns out. But in gale sauropods, they reverted to fish-like slits and migrated all the way to the base of the neck. He said the rest of the windpipe would have atrophied into a narrow tube connecting up to the nose just so that the animal could still smell, not actually for respiration. This is such a leap. Gale modeled sauropods by taking monitor lizard respiration, which was poorly understood at the time anyway, and scaling it up. And having gotten the result that according to his modeling, sauropods couldn't breathe, he did not conclude, oh, there's something we have yet to discover, or even, oh, there's a problem with my model. No, no. They needed throat slits. It is breathtaking, if you'll excuse the pun.